Ah, uh, my friends, welcome to Scott Allen Miller's Camera Cafe. I'm your host, Scott Allen Miller. Today, I'm gonna be answering one of our viewers' questions. And his question was, Scott, you know so much about cameras, you are so wise in the ways of photography. What would you recommend? He did preface it that way. He, he wanted to make sure that I knew, that he knew what I knew. And his question was, he wants to get into wildlife photography. And he doesn't want to jump to a full, completely ridiculous professional investment in photography gear uh, to get started with it. Uh, but he doesn't want to go with something amateur either. He wants something in the middle that makes sense, that's cost effective, but produces professional quality images. What would I recommend for this? And I thought for a moment and realized that the answer was right in front of me. And you can kind of guess what that might be. One, because if you know cameras, there is a pretty obvious choice here as to what is going to make sense. But also, I am filming on the GoPro Hero 9 today, so this looks much different than our normal episodes do, and that is because the camera I'm going to recommend, I want to be able to show, and it is the camera that I normally use to record our episodes. The camera I'm talking about, of course, is the Olympus EM-1 Mark II, which I'm going to show here. This is what I normally use to record our episodes here. This is a phenomenal micro four thirds, uh, mirrorless, interchangeable lens, professional camera, but it is not the current model. In fact, it is two models old. And we're gonna talk about all the reasons that this is the perfect camera for starting wildlife semi-professional photography in 2022. First of all, let's talk about image quality. This has a 20 megapixel sensor, which is plenty for normal photography. I realize that a lot of people feel that you need to have much higher megapixels, megapixels for, uh, for professional photography, but that's not really the case. The iPhone 13 is still on 12 megapixel. The iPhone 14 is on an effective 12 megapixel. That is where a lot of, um, a lot of cameras are shooting still. Nikon went up to 24 megapixels in their DX series cameras before coming back down to 20 megapixels because they felt they could do a better job with lower noise with the 20 megapixel sensor. And that's in an APS-C size sensor. This is a micro four thirds, a little bit smaller. But the micro four thirds is the smallest of what's generally considered the professional range. Olympus and Panasonic being the key makers in the micro four thirds system. Olympus being a particular favorite of mine since even the analog film days when I used to use a, an Olympus rangefinder. The uh, EM-1 uh, has been the flagship of the Olympus line. They now have the OM-1 that has superseded it, but it is essentially the same camera. It is the one model, the five and the 10 are lower end uh, semi-pro models. The one being a full professional model. The one also has a few really key features that are super important if you're gonna be doing wildlife photography. One is that it has really amazing image stabilization, some of the best in the business. So if you're gonna be holding a long lens, this is a camera that's going to work out really well for you. You're gonna be able to get a lot more out of hand holding than you would with a lot of other cameras. And that's really important when you're doing wildlife because you often don't have the flexibility of using a tripod or having long exposures. You need to be able to snap quickly, you need to be able to be mobile, uh, and you need those images to be sharp. This camera is gonna be excellent for that. A lot of the lenses, such as this one, also have uh, lens stabe. The camera has digital stabe and it has IBIS. So you have all three types of stabilization working together in a camera like this. It does very, very well. You can get the one benefit, this is the Mark II. The Mark III, which came a little bit later, is essentially the same camera. The one real improvement is that it has one stop greater uh, spec image stabilization. If that one stop of additional stabilization is worth the generally doubling cost of the camera, absolutely, the Mark III would be for you. But the Mark II is absolutely amazing, even now in 2022, has nearly every feature you could possibly want. Image quality is fantastic. Build quality is fantastic. It feels good in your hands. This is a camera that you will cherish and love owning, but is very, affordable, it has the stabilization that you need. 
The other really key feature that, that anyone doing wildlife is going to need is weatherproofing, and this is one of, if not the most weatherproofed professional camera on the market. Famously, people pour buckets of water on these. These are meant to take a beating as long as they have a professional lens. M. Zuiko, which is the lens line of Olympus, or OM Systems today, OMS, is uh, the professional lenses are weatherproof. They have two other lines. Uh, they have the regular Mzuiko, uh, sometimes called Mzuiko Digital, and they have the Mzuiko Premium line. I own nearly every premium lens. I absolutely love them, but they are not weatherproof. They're very high quality. You get great value for your money. Uh, you have a lot of flexibility, and basically they're all primes. So you have a wonderful prime lineup if you're okay with your lens not being weatherproof. But if you want to go to full weatherproofing, which you're probably going to want to do for wildlife photography, then the pro lenses from M. Zuiko are the way to go. You also have the option, because this is the Micro Four Thirds system, you have some third-party lens options. Pretty much the only one for wildlife photography that you'll be interested in is Leica. But Leica does have a large lineup for this mount, so you can consider them very carefully. But I do like Mzuiko lenses a lot myself, and I think the value is there. This is a 12 to 100. Now remember, this is a 2 to 1 crop because this is a micro four thirds system. So in full frame equivalents, that's a 24 to 200. 200 is pretty short for doing wildlife, but it is functional in some cases. So this lens, which is an F4, is a consideration if you're doing relatively close wildlife. If you're doing anything farther, you're gonna most likely be looking at, I believe, a 75 to 300 or a 100 to 400 zoom option or one of a number of long telephoto primes available from Mzuiko. You definitely have some options for doing some really nice wildlife at high speeds with great stabilization. The camera is the perfect blend of cost and build. The Mark II is generally in the five to $700 range used. And used is really where you wanna be for professional cameras when you're starting off. You can get far better equipment that will last you longer at less money than if you try to buy something new. So getting used is actually a huge benefit here, something you really wanna strive for. And the Mark II is that perfect sweet spot. The Mark III is gonna be well over $1,000 and give essentially no benefits. If you're gonna spend that money, put it into your lenses, not into your camera body. The OM-1, better yet, has a new sensor, same resolution, but new sensor technology. Is it better? Yes. It's a better camera, especially for photography, almost break even for videography. Uh, but if you're doing wildlife photography, still images, the Mark II is going to be the killer camera for you until you go completely professional. And even then you may just consider that it does everything you need. And there's no, there's very potentially no reason to move up at this time. This is a camera that holds its own at a budget price. It feels good, it looks good, it will last you a long time, it is weatherproofed, and it has the features that you need with a really strong lens lineup. And because it's micro four thirds, it's gonna be smaller and more portable than most other systems. If you were gonna go with its major competitors, such as Fuji in the APS-C sizes or Sony in the full frames, uh, you're gonna be lugging a bit more weight around, particularly in the lenses, a little bit in the body in most cases, but a lot in the lenses, uh, and you will be able to get the same important features, good stabilization and good um, weatherproofing. The Sony will outperform it in, uh, in, in autofocus. Um, if you're doing manual focus, then you can go with just about anything, but with autofocus, Sony is the leader there. Uh, the Fuji and the Olympus will be a little bit behind, but they will do a pretty decent job, especially for photography. If you're in video, the Sony is gonna have a little bit of an edge there, but it's gonna be larger and a lot more money. The biggest thing is the lenses. You can get affordable lenses that get really long on the Olympus. And remember, because it's micro four thirds, you're getting double the crop factor or two to one crop factor, which means if you buy a 300 millimeter on this, that is the equivalent of a 600 in full frame. That 600 prime on full frame is gonna be a giant piece of glass. The 300 on the micro four thirds will still be large, but it won't be the same monster that you would have to lug around. So in real world usage, a lot of professionals opt for micro four thirds for wildlife because when you're going out in the field, you need something that's rugged, but is also portable and nothing's going to beat the Olympus in that situation. 
If you want to go more amateur, there are some options with some uh, point and shoot cameras that have everything built in, uh, but you're going to give up a lot of quality and a lot of flexibility. Having the interchangeable lenses, it's going to matter because you can start with a couple different things and play around with different lens combinations to see what works best for your style. As you get more into it, you'll have more time to really investigate and say, oh, I don't use a really long lens. Something like the 1200 to 100, or even the fixed length 75 might be perfect for you. Because there's a 75 f1.8 that's very affordable. If that's the right length for you, that might be the perfect lens. You don't need a zoom. But if you're going to be doing some, you know, uh, mix use things, you're going to do some landscapes while you're out. And you're going to do some some zooms with with you know a deer or a badger or whatever. Then a 12 to 100 like this with f4, which is still pretty fast, is going to be a really good option. You may need a big prime. You may need to have a number of things you can mix and match. If you go with a point and shoot, you're stuck with the lens it comes with, which is often quite good, but you have generally a smaller sensor with fewer uh, lens options, if any options at all. It's mostly all zoom, and the speed on them, while generally decent, is not the best. So for, for low light and high speed performance, you're generally going to do better and just for flexibility so that you can start with something affordable and grow into a system as you learn how you're going to use it. That is why I feel that the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II is the absolute best place. If you're looking at serious wildlife photography, you want to get into the system, this is where you want to get started. If you decide that you absolutely love the system, you can grow into the Mark III or more likely the OM1, which is now the brand new model. There's also the EM1X, which is kind of like a, a Mark III with additional battery and vertical grip. Um, and if you decide you love the system, but you're not in love with Olympus and how it looks, feels, works, or whatever, then you have the option of taking your lenses over to the Panasonic system, which includes cameras like the GH6 that came out recently. Very, very excellent as well. These cameras also have the benefit, both the Olympus, which specializes in, in stills and video, and the Panasonic line, which specializes in video, of doing video. Some other systems are going to be a little bit uh, focused just on photography. The Olympus is really strong in both. And it's worth noting that the Olympus has possibly the best color science of any camera maker. They are at least competitive with Fuji. Fuji has a greater range of color options. Olympus focuses on having a single uh, color profile, but it is possibly the best in the business. Olympus absolutely makes fantastic gear, even though they are number six of the big six camera makers. Uh, their place as one of the highest quality ones and one of the ones that I find most interesting um, is, is very solidified. And I do want to mention that one of the reasons that I use Olympus um, beyond all the reasons that I stated in the more ephemeral world, I feel that Olympus to me is one of the camera makers along with Fuji that I tend to find incredibly inspiring. I like using an Olympus. It makes me happy to have one, to shoot with it. I like the results that come off of it. I am thrilled consistently with the look and feel of the equipment, of the pictures that it takes, of the videos that it takes, and it inspires me and encourages me to go out and shoot more because I love using the gear. I don't find the same with some other equipment makers. They may make great cameras that are solid and take good pictures. They don't inspire me and encourage me to pick up my camera and take so many pictures in the same way. That's a hard thing to put uh, into any kind of metric. But Olympus and Fuji, to me, are the cameras that really stand out as inspiring passion in photography and videography. And that's important. They may not do that for you. Maybe you feel that way about Sony or about Nikon. And that could be a really big factor for you and may override some technical features uh, or some cost features. But for me, these cameras feel like they embody the spirit of photography in a way that some other cameras do not. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you all next time.